morning and welcome to St. John's. Would you please stand and call the worship as printed in your bulletin? Peace be with you. And also with you. Come and see the love God has given to us. Come and see the peace of children of God. Come with this hope that Christ's presence is real. With your joy.
a great Sunday indeed. We, uh, it was a long Sunday. <laughs> it was a long week, but uh, uh, it, it was it was a joy to see how everything just came together in the work of, of uh, the Holy Spirit and, and God and, and all of that, and uh, how we're living that resurrection today. So let us continue to live through the resurrection with the help and the power of the Holy Spirit and uh, God's grace and mercy. Lord, our prayers. And we also give thanks to God for all that he's done. Yes, ma'am. Travel mercies for Natalie, Lord, hear our prayers. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Well, most gracious Father, as we come to you today on this first day, first week after the tomb was discovered to be we thank you. We thank you for the resurrection. We thank you for the life that we now have in Christ. We thank you for the joys that you've given us. The new great grandparents, new grandchildren, new children, new babies as well. And Father, we thank you. We ask that you bring your mighty, comforting, protective hands around each and every one of them. We also lift up those who are traveling today. We pray that you have your hands of protection around them bring them home, to bring them back to their home where they may need to be. And we have to their sin. Father, we lift up all of those who are in the hospital, who are recovering from surgery, who are recovering from cancer treatment. Father, we pray that the hands of the physicians within the doctors and the nurses, the care team, that they may help and heal our brothers and sisters. For they're not alone. It's not a battle that they have to go along. We are here for them and here with them. And Father, we lift up those unheard prayers today. Those prayers of confidence. Those who are struggling with depression. Those who are struggling and not knowing what to do. We pray that you comfort them. Hold them close. Be the light at the end of the tunnel. Give them a sign saying, it's not over. It's only just begun, and things are going to be okay. We want you to hold him close and let him come to us and we can hold him close to you. Lord, as we continue on today to worship you, we pray that you send your spirit into this building. So allow us to have open hearts and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Allow us to have an open mind, not a closed mind, but an open mind to see and feel the resurrection the way that it changes our life. And let us have eyes to see and feel your presence today as we come together to worship you as the body of Christ. Do one and only Savior made all of Amen. Well, I'm looking for the centering him. Page 13. Oh, centering is 613. I'm sorry. Page 613, please stand if you're able, O thou who this is the mystery is bread. Please stand if you're able and help me sing uh, page 613 if you're looking.
Bene, qui sì. It's not enough that the tomb was empty that day. It's not enough to proclaim that Christ is risen. You see, it's not enough to believe in the resurrection. Just believe in the resurrection. Because at some point, at some point we have to move from that event to experiencing the resurrection. And in order for us to do that, we really need to understand what it was all about. You know, we come to church on Sunday, on Easter Sunday, and we talk about how Christ was crucified and buried in his tomb and a stone rolled over in front of it, and then Mary Magdalene went there and they, they found that the tomb was open and, and it was empty, and, and boom, we're proclaiming that he is risen, that Christ is here, he's alive, but that's not enough. We have 
to understand that a resurrected life begins, it begins with understanding and recognizing the risen Christ. Not just recognizing the risen Christ, but recognizing Christ among us now. That's the gift that we are given at Easter. And it also challenges us to describe what the gospel is all about. You know, Cleopas and his companion, they're telling the other disciples just how Jesus came to them, how he appeared to them on the road to Emmaus, when again he shows up out of nowhere, interrupting their conversation in the upper room. When he starts off in a love way, he starts off his conversation. Peace be with you. That's what we do every Sunday, right? Peace be with you. They see him, they hear him, but at that point in time, they still didn't recognize him. You know, they thought they were seeing a ghost. Okay, now, you've got to stop and think about this. This is ancient times. They know that Jesus was crucified. They witnessed it. Some of them witnessed it. Some of them ran. They were hiding. But they know that he was crucified. They know that he was dead. And they know that he was put into a tomb and buried. And they know one thing for sure, that dead men do not come back to life. <coughs> dead men do not come back to life. To them, the logical answer is this. This can only be a ghost. It can only be a spirit that we're seeing without a body. The tomb was indeed open, but there were <coughs> Their minds were closed. They were continuing to live. They were continuing to think and understand in the usual human categories. You see, they have separated spirit and matter. They separated divinity and humanity and heaven and earth. Whenever we make that separation, it closes our minds. We deny ourselves the resurrected life of which Christ did indeed die. And when we do that, we lose our sense of an ability to recognize holiness. To recognize holiness in the world. To recognize holiness in one another. To recognize a holiness within ourselves. But with the resurrection of Jesus, God shatters all of those human categories. Those human categories of who God is, where God's life and energy are to be found, and how God actually works in this world. We shatter all of those. Brothers and sisters, we can't really ever comprehend or contain or control or resurrect life by human thought or understanding. Jesus' resurrection compels us to step outside our usual human understanding of reality. And it compels us to step in to the divine reality. A new reality that begins with touching and seeing, that begins with flesh and bones, hand and feet, and strangely enough, a piece of royal fish. Jesus told his disciples, look at my hands and feet. See that it is I, myself, Touch and see, for a ghost does not have flesh, a ghost does not have bones, as you see that I have. Then he showed them his hands and feet, and after, he sat and ate a piece of broiled fish in their presence. So what does flesh and bones, hands and feet, and a broiled fish have in common? That's a strange combination, isn't it? Flesh and bones, hands and feet, and broiled fish. All of these things make up creation. These things are the natural order. Mary, a woman created by God, gave Jesus the flesh and bones in his hands and feet. And she also gave him the stomach that would eat the fish that God created. The very same flesh and bones, the very same hands and feet appear to Cleopas and his companion on the road to Emmaus and then, and then vanished from their sight. And now, very same flesh and bone, hands and feet, show up unannounced, unexpected, in the midst of the conversation with others. The resurrected life of Christ is revealed in created order. The resurrected body and life of Christ unite the visible and the invisible, the matter and spirit, humanity, and the 
divinity all together. You see, on one hand, Jesus is the real body. But on the other hand, it's not, it, 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 it's not subject to the natural laws of time and space. It's not one or the other, but it's both. It's a new and different reality. The degree to which we have allowed ourselves to be bound by the created order is the degree to which we are unable to see that resurrected life and holiness in the world. Let me repeat that. The degree to which we allow ourselves to be bound by the created order, flesh and bone, hands and feet, and a piece of broiled fish, is the degree to which we are unable to see a resurrected life and holiness in this world. In other words, our mind is closed. Because, you see, we bind ourselves through our fears. We bind ourselves through sorrows. We bind ourselves to our losses, our runaway thoughts and distractions, our attachments to addiction, to different things, to, to people, and even different beliefs. Sometimes it's our unwillingness to allow or trust God to grow and change us. In binding ourselves to this created order, we lose recognition of the ability to live a sacred life. That's the very opposite of a resurrected life, isn't it? When we bind ourselves to these different things. The resurrected life of Christ reveals in all creation, and every one of us are filled with God. The resurrected life of Christ reveals in all creation, and every one of us are filled with God, with His holiness and His divinity. Nothing, nothing can bind or supersede the grace that is given us through His resurrection. That's the unconditional love that God offers us, unconditional forgiveness that we come to Him and ask Him on a daily basis. Unconditional life, unconditional life. That is, I think, one of the most difficult things for us to see and to believe in and to live in too. See, it's however the divine reality into which we are invited, not at some future point, Time, but a place that is here and now. Christ our God longs and desires to open our minds to understand the scriptures, to understand all that has been written, all that has been spoken and revealed about him in whatever form that happens and that has happened. That's why Jesus, that's, that's what Jesus did for the disciples, and it's what he does for us today. It's not an academic or an intellectual understanding that the disciples are witnesses. That does not mean that they now have all the answers. It doesn't mean that, that they now have the life, I'm sorry, it does mean now that they have the life that Jesus wants to give them. See, their witnesses are based not on what they know, but on who they are in how they live and their relationship with the risen Christ. I don't know how it happens. There's not an instruction manual that we're given in preaching school. But the resurrected life isn't just acquired, it's received. It happens when we risk unbinding ourselves from the usual ways of seeing, from those usual ways of living and relating to different things. It's allowing the natural order to open and reveal something completely different, something more. And that's what happened to the disciples that day with Jesus' hands and feet, his flesh and bones, and that piece of fish. They saw, they recognized, they saw and recognized something different, something about Jesus and something about what they saw and recognized about themselves. There is a sense of holiness, and this happens to us as well. It's just as a fairy tale. I want you to stop and think about a time right now. So bring your thoughts back together. I know they're all over the place. But think about a time in your life when you lost track of time. 
Now, I'm not talking about a time where you just forgot what time it was. We do that all the time. We get busy and then all of a sudden you look up and it's five o'clock. But a time where we lost track, okay? A time that you were so awake, so present, that it was as if you were entering a new and different world. Think about a time when your life seemed more real than it's ever had before. A time in your life where you could touch something and taste it in a brand new way. What I want you to do is I want you to recall a moment in your life when your heart was opened, when it was softened, and you knew that you were somehow different. Somehow different. Remember that day you said something new. Something new that was being offered to you. Possibilities that you did not create for yourself. That they just unfolded and opened up. I want you to reflect on that moment when you realized that you were okay. And that you could start again to live life. Those are the moments when Christ opens our minds to understanding. Those are the moments of awe. Those are the moments of wonder that leave us in a sacred life, in a sacred silence. They fill our eyes with tears, tears not of sorrow, and tears that don't make us weep from sorrow and pain, but tears of water in a brand new life. Those are the moments which we say, never, ever want this moment to be in. I don't know, or I don't want to leave this place, those thin places. In each of these moments, the one is fully alive, is fully risen. The Christ is calling you to see and recognize Him, calling you to see and join Him and discover a brand new life. This is the authentic self that we long to become. The self that we already are and the self that we are becoming. This is the resurrected life. This is the resurrected life. Don't lose that moment. Don't put this text of living the resurrected life behind you. See, it's much, 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 way too easy to come here each and every Sunday. It's easy to sit here and, and listen to the gospel, to hear for better or for worse, whatever it is we're saying that day in our message. It's easy to leave these, these walls and return to life as usual. To walk out these doors and immediately close your mind. Immediately become blind once again to the resurrection that's around you. Let that happen. Your life is way too important to let something like that happen again. I want you to carry this text with you over the next week. Let it open your mind to the life Christ is offering you. Let it open your eyes, your heart, and your mind to the life Christ is offering you. Let this text be the voice of Christ opening mind and understanding. Take it and sit with it. Pray with it. Wrestle with it. Trust it. Catch a glimpse of the risen Christ. You are witnesses of all of these things. That's what he tells us. You are witnesses of all of these things. You are a witness to all of these things. Tell it. Live it. Become it. Because you see, brothers and sisters, the resurrected life is yours. Amen? Let's pray. Well, we follow As we ponder upon these words, let us reflect on a mind that is open.
Let us reflect on a mind that, that we can see the impossibility. Let us reflect on a mind that we can see a holiness that is within us, our neighbors, and in this world. Let us reflect on the supernatural as the Holy Spirit brings the resurrected life to us as we live it, as we sit with it, as we become it. In Jesus we pray.
seated. And would you join me in your hymnals on page 12 as we prepare for Holy Communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and to seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, any good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name in their unending hymn. Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood and by your spirit. Make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy <coughs> church, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. Body of Christ, given for you. It's the blood of Christ, shed for you. Said for your sin, forgiveness for the world. For those helping with communion, please come up. I would also like to remind everyone while they're coming up that this is an open table and it is set by God's hand and not by ours, and everyone is welcome at this table.
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Well, before we get started and stand to sing our last song, we have a little announcement. Tom and Rhonda Hawkins have decided to move their membership down from Pflugerville, so we're going to ask them to come up and we're going to give them the uh, Luther membership test. Over. You know, even though you're lifelong Methodist, you still get to have to take that test. <laughs> and I believe that test is on uh, page 38, 36, somewhere along in there, so help me find it real quick. Grab your little red hymnals as we... There it is. All right, it's on page 40, actually. Okay, y'all ready? All right. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord, in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say I do. Okay. Y'all ready out there? Your part too. It's, it's a, will you nurture these children in Christ's body that by your teachings and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. And do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. All right, will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these people now before you into your care?
welcome Tom and Rhonda one more time with a little old Christian love. Welcome to our St. John. We appreciate it. And, and you've done so much for us already just by being here. It's a blessing for y'all to be here. Remember one thing. Living the resurrection. You have a choice. You can go back to the way it was before Easter. You can live on those fears. You can continually to dwell on those sorrows. Or you can put those behind you and see the holiness that each and every one of you carry. Let Christ bring that to you. That is what he did when he rose from the tomb on the third day. Go from here in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay.